Okay, everyone, it's Monday night, team call. I am so excited you guys are here. Um, I, You guys know, I always look forward to these, even though I have four kids and mine were literally fighting like five seconds ago. I was the mom that, you know, put my head out the door and screamed at the top of my lungs to shut up so I could start my team call. Yeah, that was totally me. Um, so I try not to say that normally, but tonight I am very happy because we have Erin Bush on our call and guys, this lady is amazing. Uh, I've actually followed her for a long time now. She is a sapphire in the company. She's super sweet and I just love her posting and the way that she works her business. And so you guys are in for a treat. I am so happy she agreed to get on here because I know it is hard. You guys have your own teams and your own schedules and I'm sure you're asked all the time to get on calls. So Thank you so much for getting on here, girl, and you just take it away. Well, thanks so much, Kendall. You guys are so lucky to have this gal as your leader. She has such a vision for you, and her prayer over you is that you will see what Plexus can do for your family. And I tell you what, I'm absolutely convinced that I would not be here today without my upline praying for me. So I hope that you take her leadership and her vision and her prayer for you and listen to it and evolve in your plexus journey. I can't see a lot of you. I would love to see your face if you could un like take yourself off video. I do best when I can see who I'm talking to because that means a lot to me. I am a teacher by trade so i'm very into engaging with my audience so thank you guys so much for um letting me see you i'm aaron bush yes i'm a sapphire with plexus and uh my story is a little bit different probably than well you know what every story is unique really your story is unique your story is special and it doesn't really matter how big or small you think your, your pleximony is. It is important to someone out there to hear you. So it is important that you are sharing it repeatedly on your Facebook page and your social media when you meet somebody in the elevator, wherever you can bless others. Make sure you are telling your story. And that's why I'm on here tonight because I am very just... I want to be able to give to others who might be in a place that I was and tell you there is hope and you can get out of it. Um, very quickly, I had health issues starting about eight years ago with the birth of my third child. Previous to that, I was a teacher of high school students and it was my passion. I just loved mentoring. I mean, it wasn't about English. It wasn't about literature. It wasn't even about the writing. It was about pouring into these young souls that had such big dreams and big ambition and mentoring them spiritually and um, just who they were pouring into them. Well, I decided to be a stay-at-home mom, and I love that too. I do think I lost a little bit of myself during those diaper years, but I lost my health when I had my third pregnancy. And it became deterior it just deteriorated over time. I spent thousands of dollars on naturopaths and holistic medicine, on supplements, and trying to find a way out of the very, very stronghold um, my symptoms had over my body. I got to the point that when we moved here to Oklahoma, I was I was actually scared for my life. And uh, was and you know we have a choice in life. When adversity hits us, we can choose to be better or bitter. We can choose strength and fortitude and just keep going, or we can choose bitterness and misery. And I chose bitterness and misery, and I lost myself completely. I had no hope. I was in a very bad place, just darkness in a hole, I would say. My symptoms were so bad that I would park in the parking lot of Target to go shopping, and I would shuffle up the wheelchair ramp because I could not go up and down a curb. Um, I was not able to sit through church. I stopped going to church consistently, and many days had to stay home because sitting in church caused me such pain. I could not read my Bible. Here I was an English teacher at heart. I could not read a novel. My brain fog and the inability to concentrate was so bad. Um, I craved caffeine like 
and caffeine sugar. It was like this little high that would get me through a couple of hours. And then I need a little high again, would get me through a couple of hours. It was exhausting and I hated it. And getting control was very, very difficult. It was impossible, really. I even had a physician tell me that this was part of what I was suffering from. It was a symptom of it. Just do the best I could. And <laughs> which was not great. So when Plexus came into my life, it was at a moment that five days before I had been weeping on the floor of my bathroom. When we moved to Oklahoma from California, I, all the kids were going to go back to traditional school because I needed a break. I could not homeschool anymore. But then I started thinking, what if all I need is to get back in the classroom to find myself? So I applied for a job at my kids' school, and they offered me, they wanted me to work full-time, and I knew I couldn't do that, so they offered me four classes. And when she called to tell me I got the job, I was elated. I was like, this is what I've been waiting for. And that night, I was on the floor of my bathroom, weeping, thinking, my gosh, how am I going to get up? How am I going to get up and go work? For, for four to five hours, just four classes. I don't know how I'm going to. I can hardly get out of bed to go get the kids to school. For three weeks, I thought about calling and quitting before I had even started. So they had enough time to find somebody else. And one night, I was on the floor of my bathroom weeping again. And this time, my prayer changed. And I said, Lord, if you want me to do this, you have to give me the strength. I give you, and these are my exact words, I give you my ugly, unattractive, broken, unhealthy body. Use it as you want to. And no joke, five to seven days later or so, my sponsor, Amber Hargett, posted on um, Facebook about Plexus. It did not take me long to order. I ordered two three-day trial packs and... I thought, you know, I mean, my husband was at the point where he was taking care, he'd been taking care of everybody and everything for so long. My eight-year-old watching my other two little ones so that I could um, rest during the day. And she'd done that for like four years. I mean, my family was in a place of crisis. Mom was sick and on the couch and now taking on something new. My husband was willing to do anything to get help. So during that first week of the trial, I thought, well, gosh, I've been sick a really long time. I should probably give it a month. So I ordered one full bag of Slim. And a couple weeks in, I thought, well, I've been sick a really long time. Maybe I should try three months. And my husband in the meantime was going, you're different. You're like better different. And I'm like, no, nope, I don't feel anything. I'm still exhausted. I'm still this. I'm still this, you know, focusing on the poor health, right? I was teaching at the time, but man, I was wiped. I was barely getting through the day. So during this time, I decide I'm going to become an ambassador. It's cheaper. I become an ambassador, a reluctant, grumpy, irritated, arrogant ambassador. And my sponsor was so kind, she added me to 10 million team pages. <laughs> Here's my first nugget for you. Only add your wholesalers to one team page, one. And do it on the one that will build their belief the most. Because what happened was this. I was added to team pages, people welcomed me, and I sat back and watched. Yeah, right. I'm not happy to be here. Who are all these people? And then I sat there lurking, and I would send my sponsor messages like, these people just want to sell something. They just want to make money. The triplex can't possibly be this good. There's no way that probiotic is better than the $60 one my naturopath gave me. It does not need to be refrigerated. These people know nothing. No joke. This was, these were my messages to my poor sponsor my friend and former student actually. And she was kind and she was loving and she would just say things like, 
I think it's really pretty good. I'm liking this probiotic. Just very sweet, very sweet and loving all the time. I'm sure she thought, oh my gosh, I've got another message from Erin. But no, she, just, she still answered them and was kind about it. But what I did not realize is as I'm lurking, my belief is being built. So month two, month three, go, uh, month three comes, I add in BioCleanse and I start feeling a little something. In fact, my family starts to notice. And I ha one of my little girls comes up to me, she was 12 at the time, and she said, Mama, I like who you are now. And I knew, I knew this was something. But I was so miserable. I still refused to take that probiotic five. But I did start posting. A post here, a post there. Hey, I'm doing this thing. Plexus, we're having a sale. Here's my link. Oh, here, check it out. Amber told me about this thing called Slim. I do really like it. I mean, just like not engaged. Not, I got two customers, shockingly, from that. But just not, you know, no, none of this, I'm going to build a business. I didn't want, was not in it for business. I thought my profession of teaching was nobler than anything anyone could do from home. In fact, I was a massive network marketer hater. To the point that if you invited me to something, I really don't care how good of a friend or family member you are, I would not go. I hated direct sales and network marketing with a passion. I was so arrogant. Okay, month four comes along, you guys. I finally decide to open ProBio 5. In the meantime, I've quit twice. I've quit because a horrible, horrible detox. You're talking about a really, a person who, oh my gosh, slim, put me in detox, slim did. I'd quit twice, thank goodness I had taken my picture so I could see the difference in my face, and I would get back on, and then I'd quit, and then I'd try a different product from somebody else, and then I'd get back on. My poor sponsor, you guys, seriously. And then in that fourth month, I added ProBio5, and it was like the brain fog just drifted away out of my head. And that Thanksgiving, 2014, I drew my line in the sand. I realized that God was speaking to my heart. I had been hiding for eight years. And I'll tell you how I hid. When we would visit my hometown in California, I would not leave the house because I was so afraid that I would see someone from high school or from my early teaching days and they would see who I had become. And it was not just physical. It was who I had become. I was so much a shell of this positive, inspiring, pouring into others, nurturing other souls person that I did not want to be seen. Then on Facebook, I hid too. I didn't use a profile picture that was me. I used one from before I got sick. I also had about 450 friends on Facebook. And over the last, I would say about two years before starting Plexus, if something good happened in your life one time, I could say congratulations. If something happened good a second time, I'd say nothing and be looking at you out of the side of my head. The third time, defriend. I was down to 185 friends on Facebook, you guys. This is the shell of the person that I was. So that miserable person that is unkind to you about your business and about Plexus, that was me. That was me. And I am a sapphire with Plexus now. God must be laughing. Okay. <laughs> Let me move to drawing my line in the sand. Thanksgiving, Black Friday, I go to my husband and I say, I don't know what, but I feel like God wants me to do this business. It makes no sense to me. I'm working. I'm barely surviving. I'm better 
with plexus and I'm barely surviving teaching and three kids and soccer and homework. And now I think I'm supposed to do this plexus thing. I think he wants me to stop hiding. I think he wants me to tell my story of how bad it was before, my embarrassing, humiliating story, and somehow do this plexus thing. And he said, maybe you'll get your products paid for. I said, maybe we'll see. And that weekend, I drew my line in the sand. And boy, people must have been able to tell. So then I ask you tonight, have you drawn your line in the sand where you've decided this is your mountain and it doesn't matter if you die on the way there, you are going to reach the top. Have you done that? For me, the, that first post of being so vulnerable about why I had been hiding was terrifying. I was literally, you could see my hand shaking from making that first vulnerable post and the second post and the third and so on. But people must have seen a difference. I went silver that weekend. But here's the funny part, guys. I was not done growing. You might have said, you might say, well, then there's the end of the story. She went sapphire after that, right? No, no. You know the iceberg thing? You're seeing the tip. You guys, my iceberg extends the planet. I mean, it's the size of the planet the amount below that had to go into getting me to Sapphire. And here's part of it. I this is when we were still getting paper paychecks. I refused to look at my Plexus paychecks. One would come in the mail and, my hus and I'd, I'd see it. I'd put it on my husband's chair and I'd say when he got home, don't tell me how much that Plexus check is. And he said, why not? You know, to him, he's a finance guy. He does our, you know, he does everything in our life when it comes to finances. The burden of finances has always been on him. To get an extra paycheck, that's like huge. And I did not want to hear how much it was because I wasn't in this to make money. I wasn't in this for the business. But you know what at the root of it was? I was prideful. I was too good for network marketing. And I did not want that reward of money to then tell me that I'm in this kind of business. I have always had such, uh, like just so much, um, uh, I don't know, I can't think of the word, but um, just thought so much of entrepreneurs, but the ones that opened their own boutique, the ones that opened a cupcake shop, right? The ones that decided to open a gas station or do a franchise, like, but never had that kind of respect for network marketers. So here I was in this quandary with myself where I am sharing this and I'm making money from it and it's exciting and it's, I'm passionate about helping others, but I refuse to see myself as a business builder. And that's when something else happened. I was still on the team pages. In fact, now I've been added to more, which was fine. I was ready to grow. I wanted to learn everything. And then the old person came back and I became negative to the point that my diamond upline, Melissa Eichenhorst, had to send me a message and say, Aaron, I try really hard to make my team page a positive one. Could you try to be a little more positive on my team page? She didn't delete me. She probably should have. And here I was, a silver ambassador with Plexus, being negative on a big team page. You know what that did for me? I denied my negativity wholeheartedly, convincingly even maybe, but it held a mirror up. And I thought, my gosh, who have I become? Who am I? And that is where the real journey started. Because you are looking at someone who stopped making New Year's resolutions 10 or more years before, stopped ever making any type of goal because I never accomplished them. And it was too disheartening to try. And in fact, I hated New Year's because of that. People would talk about New Year's resolutions. I refused to have any, any at all. So the very first book that I read, and I praise the Lord for putting it in my life at that time, was Failing Forward by John Maxwell. 
and it spoke to me like no other book besides the Bible had ever spoken to me. It was me through and through. And I thought, my gosh, I can fail and still succeed. So if you have not read that book and boy, you struggle with failure, read it. But here's the next step, guys. And this is the step. Yet yeah, that made the first, that was like the first foundation. But then I started reading um, and listening to YouTubes because, man, I was soaking up everything I could get about mindset and uh, how much that plays a part into your behavior and your team and not just your team, but people watching you. Because I guarantee you guys, your Facebook audience is watching you. They are waiting for you to stop. They are waiting for you to quit so that deep inside they can say, I knew it. So this is one of the things you've got to understand. There are some people that come into this business and they have already self-grown enough that mindset doesn't hinder them. But I have found in my business in the last two years, most people fall on two of the four pillars of belief with Plexus. The first pillar of belief is products. Most of you know the products work. In fact, really guys, they work for 100% of people. We've got even the healthiest person on the planet can use X Factor and Mega X or Proba 5. So our products work and you know that and you know how to build your belief in that if you don't have it. Look up the ingredients. The internet is full of amazing inter, uh, information on our ingredients. Look up testimonials. Go to YouTube and listen. Go to an opportunity event and listen. See how life-changing these products are. Second pillar, the compensation plan. Pillar of belief in the compensation plan. The only way for you to build your belief in this is for you to know it inside and out. I printed up that big old 13 page paper and the tools in our library in the back office and I went through it and I read through it. And I didn't understand it at all. So I listened to YouTubes about it, but I know something that a lot of people don't really grasp in order to truly, truly know something and believe it inside and out. You got to teach it. You got to teach it guys. You got to be the teacher. So find somebody in your life spouse, kid, friend, preferably someone who's not on Plexus yet, and tell them, I've got to give a presentation. Will you help me go over it? I just need a listening ear. And then go over the compensation plan with them. There's another way you can do this if that makes you uncomfortable. I hope you're willing to push outside your comfort zone. But just in case, you can actually open your own Zoom account and watch yourself do it on Zoom. The first time I ever trained on the compensation plan, I was a gold ambassador with Plexus, and I can guarantee you I said things that were wrong, but I did it, and then I did it again, and it became easier and easier, and now I know it inside and out. In fact, when I meet with a potential, I only bring a few things. We go to coffee, I buy my treat, and we sit down, and she knows we're talking about Plexus, and I bring something for her to take home, like a catalog, something tangible. I bring the little ranks, not the, maybe the income disclosure, yes, but the little ranks that have the little Lexus at it at the top, the little stair step that's out floating out there somewhere. And I bring a piece of notebook paper. And on that notebook paper, I literally write out, here's you as an ambassador with your $35 website. Now go get three people, three to five people who love you unconditionally. Who are they? And they tell me, well, my mom my aunt, my sister. Okay, one, two, three. And then we go through the first five to six ways on a piece of notebook paper, how they can make income once they sign next month. I mean, it's just it's so simple. So know that belief. Number three, pillar of belief, network marketing. This, this one and the next one are the ones that people stumble on. If you do not understand the value of network marketing, you are missing out on this business. Read the four-year four career 
GoPro also has some stuff on network marketing, but what I'd really like you to understand is a book by Robert Kiyosaki called The Perfect Business or The Business for Helping Others. You guys, this is an equal opportunity for all walks of life. Anybody has $35 and anybody can go get free internet at the library for an hour a day to work a business. Anybody can do this. There is no difference between a diamond and all of us except time and consistency. Your drive and your determination and your influence and all those things, yes, they determine whether or not you go fast or you go slow or how you grow. But you, we, each and every one of us have the ability for self-development. We can read. We can listen to books. We can grow ourselves. We all know how to go outside our comfort zone. It's whether or not you're willing to. So it is truly an equal opportunity. And residual income, you guys, my husband is still working. And last week, he got paid for last week. Well, guess what? He still has to go this week to get paid for this week. Guess what? I'm still getting paid from two years ago. That's residual income. This is a lifetime job, guys. You're on a lifetime journey of self-development, and 90% of this business is attraction marketing. It's people coming to you because they want to be spoken to by you. They want to listen to you. They think they can do the same thing as you, and they want to be around you. Be attractive, and this is where people need to grow as the fourth pillar, believing in me, believing in yourself. You must believe that you can get to whatever point you want to get to. If you do not, your conscious mind, your subconscious mind will say, ha ha, I have seen people sabotage themselves from hitting a rank because they were afraid they wouldn't be a good leader. What does that tell me? That person has got to work on self-development and believing in themselves as a leader before they will ever hit that rank or they will continue to sabotage their team and themselves so they don't get there. You have got to truly understand what your subconscious mind is telling your conscious mind. You have to. It's like the ant telling the elephant where to go. So let's talk about that for a second. I had to do this and I had to do it hard because I did not believe in myself. Middle-aged, overweight, um, wasn't losing weight at a rapid rate had been so angry and so upset and difficult. I mean, I cannot, you guys, to me, exercising was the ability to go walk around the block. It wasn't going into beast mode at CrossFit. I could not walk up and down a curb. To me, success was getting out of the house after having a long day and being able to walk around the block with no pain, that is success. But what if I had compared myself to someone else whose success was much further along than mine? In, you know what I mean? Do you hear what I'm saying? You guys, you have to look at your journey alone. Do not look to the left or the right. You have to look at you. In the end, the Lexus is amazing. Yes, the six-figure income is amazing. Yes, the Hawaii trip is amazing. Yes, but I do not take a single one of those into the other, the next life with me. I do not take any of those into heaven with me. I take relationships and I take my own personal journey from point A to the end. I don't ever feel like I've arrived ever until I'm standing in front of God and pray he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And this journey gives you the opportunity to do the well done part. Look, what do network marketers do more than anything else, more than anyone else? They influence people. Jewels influence people. Thousands of people. Do you think Satan wants you to influence people for the positive? No. He wants you to stumble and fall and hear his lies and hear your own lies to where you don't even realize you're replaying them over and over and over in your head. And you're sabotaging your own business over and over and over. So I'm going to tell you how. You can put those lies aside. Are you telling yourself, I'm not a leader. People don't listen to me. 
I can't do it. I'm not as dynamic as she is. I don't have as many friends on Facebook. I don't care what you are saying to yourself. It is most likely a lie. You are probably also, this is the other thing I hear all the time, my gosh. My plexus business is doing so amazing. I added customers this week. God wants me to do this. I'm so glad I'm here. Two weeks later, oh my gosh, my last two ambassadors just quit and someone else told me that they can't afford product this month. This must not be for me. God's will must not be for me to be here. If you have paid that $35 and you are on any call at all, this is for you, the end. And this is why, because it is not just about the products. It is not just about the paycheck. It is about people. It is about people. And when you can unselfishly get out of your fearful box and share, you will influence so many for the positive. Your leader prays over you. From the very first day that I drew my line in the sand, that Thanksgiving weekend, that night my husband laid, and I laid side by side in my, our bed and we gave God my business. Now at the time, I didn't really see it as business. I said, bring to me who you want on my team. I want only divine appointments. This company, I don't think there's another company out there like this that is so blessed by prayer. The amount of people in this company that pray over our leadership, our products, that back office, and over each other is phenomenal. It is no wonder we are in a fight right now. It is no wonder you find obstacles. I have someone on my team whose life was going great until she paid her $34.95 for Plexus and she told me straight up, I know I'm in the right place. I cannot tell you the spiritual warfare I have had in the last two months since I signed up with Plexus. And she keeps going and working her business. Okay, how do you do this? There is a Bible verse out there. It says, dude, oh, well, hold on. Uh, yes, that is it right there. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs. Now, you may say, okay, I, that's okay. I'm a great encourager. I know how to encourage people. I believe in people. But do you believe in yourself? I'm looking at each of you here, and I wonder, does Linda believe in herself? Does Joan believe in herself? Does Amanda believe in herself? Does Stephanie believe in herself? Because here's the deal, you guys. You cannot believe in others until you believe you can do it. You can't. You cannot pour from an empty cup. And I had to realize that I had all these people that were starting to join me, and that's wonderful. But my gosh, I had nothing to pour into them if I didn't believe in me. So how do you do that? Look at the rest of the verse. It says, Build up others according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. You must listen first. This is Ephesians 4.29. So how do you do that? There's a great book out there called Self Talk, Soul Talk, where she talks about listening to your soul in a quiet place. I don't care if you have to go in the bathroom and turn on the fan. You get in there. What, how is your soul feeling? What kind of words are you saying to yourself? And you must identify words that are lies. You must capture them to Christ, and then you must replace them with truth. So how do you replace them to truth? If you identify and you're able to write down, and you will know as you write down things that you believe about yourself, you will know if it's truly what you believe because you will feel sick when it's a lie that you are believing about yourself. So you take that captive to Christ and you rewrite it to his truth. So... What you do here is you change those false beliefs to truth through repetition. Do that through Bible verses. You do that through reading self-development books, something like Feeling Forward, Self Talk, Soul Talk. Um, uh, what do you say when you talk to yourself? Finding those things that are wrong and replacing them with truth. And I don't mean, this is not like on the, when my son plays soccer, he is, if you know the personality the four color personalities, he is a red personality through and through. I thought when we put him in soccer, he would like dominate. He's red, right? He loves the challenge. I potty trained that kid, by not by consistency, but by saying, I bet you can't get your pee in the middle of the toilet. 
<laughs> he potty trained himself. So I thought for sure out on the soccer field, he would just be awesome. And he got out there and he was afraid. And it was so tempting to yell, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. But what does that do? Where's the emphasis? Where's the word emphasis there? It's afraid, right? So instead, we say things like, be bold, be aggressive. You got it. Do the same for yourself. Don't say, I'm not afraid to share plexus. You say over and over and over to yourself, writing it, hearing it in your own voice. I have something important. People want to listen to what I have to say. I am bold. I'm courageous. And I will share with others this gold that I have in my hands. There's a great app out there called Repeat It Again. So get it. Repeat it again. You guys, I just use this for a wisdom tooth removal. I was scared to death. I was not going under IV sedation. I was like getting the shot. And I listened to myself say 13 times over and over and over for three days prior, this is no big deal. It's just a tooth coming out. You'll feel so good when it's over. It worked. I, I healed pretty fast. I'm kind of proud of myself. You guys, replacing the lies is so important. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to give you some practical things. Identifying action that builds business. I think one of the mindset things that people are not willing to overcome, they're willing to eventually believe in themselves. They're willing to see this business as an unselfish opportunity to pour into others. I think people are willing to get to that point, but you know what they're not willing to do? They're not willing to say that they sell a product. You sell a product, but you don't just sell a product. You sell yourself. It is okay to sell. It is okay to use the word sell. When you go buy a new car and you're sitting and you're excited and you sign the paperwork, do you feel badly towards the car salesman because he's going home with a paycheck that's going to help put food on the table for his family? No. What about with sale, selling furniture? What about going into Walmart and buying a product? You don't feel bad about that. You're paying for something and you're getting something in return. Do not feel bad about selling plexus. You guys, there is nothing else on the planet like this where people can make money, very reasonably priced products that can literally change someone's health. Uh, just like, I mean, incredible, incredible. I spent thousands of dollars on supplements. Nothing has helped me the way plexus has. Anybody has $35. That when you marry amazing products with such a generous compensation plan, you have nothing to be apologetic for. In fact, I would challenge you, if you feel apologetic for selling, then guess what? This is about you, and you are focused on you, and you are not focused on others. That's the number one pe reason I think people don't advance is because all they can think about is how they will be looked at, how they will feel instead of looking at the person on the other side. Amber did not want to post about Plexus. Her sponsor kept pushing her over and over and just post, just post, just post, and I saw it. My children did not know who Amber was, but would pray before bed thanking God for Amber. Who out there is waiting for you to tell them? Who cannot walk up and down a curb? Who is in such darkness and you don't know it, but you've kept your mouth shut. Now, Amber is absolutely certain that Plexus would have come to me another way. In fact, there's a verse, um, if you've ever studied Esther, uh, Mordecai, her uncle, wanted her to do something very scary that would put her life in danger. And she did not want to do it, and he said this to her. If you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your fa father's family will perish. Who knows that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this? You are on this call tonight. That is divine appointment for such a time as this. Be used by God. Do not be ashamed of what you do. It is life-giving, and I am an example of that life-giving 
I am a result. I've got another gal on my team. I could tell you stories about what that poor thing has gone through. She, her life, her family is so dynamically changed because of Plexus products. And she was a clean eater, holistic. We're talking massively, you know, just crunchy. And nothing has changed her life the way Plexus has. What if I had not posted because of my pride? All right. Um, let's see. Okay, what I want to say. Now, there are three actions to build your business. I know we're going over your time, but I'm going to give you some practical things right now. First, let's recap. Identify, capture, and replace things that are obstacles in your mind that are keeping you from growing in your business. What is that? How is Satan sabotaging you? How are you sabotaging yourself? You can get past it. All right. Now, pitching or presenting products or the business, that is a business building action. And I bet you just cringed at the word pitch because it sounds like you're saying something false. But if you look at the phrase pitch in, what does that mean? It begins to work in earnest and vigorously. And that is exactly what you must do in order to get to the rank that you want and the freedom you want for your family. Two, negotiating a sale. This is closing a sale. You guys, you must ask for the sale. If you have somebody on an opportunity event, that night intend to sign them up. Say words like, let's get you going tonight, put your order in tonight, you'll get your products in a few days and we'll get you started feeling better. Make this a solution for their issue and there is nothing wrong with being bossy, just a little bit, and helping them close the sale. People want to be told what to do to a certain extent and I'm telling you what to do here, ask for the sale. Number three, prospecting or looking for new pen potentials. But what the interesting thing is, most people don't understand what the word prospecting mean, means. Now, that may, it may seem like to you, well, you know, you go out and you go into a restaurant and you start looking for somebody you can sell to. But when you look at the word prospecting, it is an expectation and a looking forward to a result. So when you are looking at potentials, this is, this is what you do. You think to yourself, who do you know that needs help? Who do you know that needs to find their entrepreneurial spirit? I was one. Who do you believe in? Who do you believe in? But here's the other thing, too. I hear people all the time say, how do I talk to my dream teamer? How do I know if somebody's a dream teamer? What makes them a dream teamer? I've actually started to kind of hate that because I would not have been a dream teamer. But Amber loved me where I was at. She made no judgments, and I'm a sapphire with plexus. It took me 15 months to get to Emerald, and you guys, no one would have looked at me and said, Aaron Bush, dream teamer. Don't judge anyone. See every single person that joins your team as a, potent, as a dream teamer. See them as that. Because you will treat them with such love and support and goodness. They will want to be with you long term. I gave up twice. Came back. Flew to the top. It's just crazy amazing what God can do in people when we let, when we let him. Okay. I'm going to leave you this with this last thing here. Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Remember when I said it's not the products, it's not the paycheck, it's the people? I don't care if I never made another paycheck. I don't care if the products wouldn't work, didn't, like, stopped working for some reason. You know why I would stay? Because of the people. Because the people, we have we have the greatest support network on the planet. You guys, one of our compensation points, the pay point, that is based on community support. Because if I do well, you do well. And if you do well, I do well. That's the Plexus pay point. I like to call it the one Plexus point. That's what I tell my team. So one Plexus point. 
because that pay point where it determines how much that is every month is determined on the entire company doing well or doing poorly. So if we all link arms and do well and pour into each other, we all do well with our paychecks. Okay, I am all done. Sorry, I went over. No, I don't think a single one of us, see, nobody dropped off, okay? So I don't think a single one of us <laughs> minded that you kept going. I kept looking at the numbers. I'm like, nope, they're growing. They're not dropping. So, well, I usually have a question or two afterward, but I, I don't know what I could even ask. Oh, okay. So I feel like, I mean, I seriously had goosebumps. If you could see the messages I was getting from people, like, girl, you're such a blessing to us tonight. I know. So many of us needed to hear this, and I know no matter wh where you're at in this, belief and mindset is something you always have to work on. I mean, you sound like the expert in belief and mindset, and I know it's something you still have to daily work on. I do. And yeah. It, you know, it's, it's dying to ourselves, that fleshly part of us that wants to be the best at everything and do everything, and then we judge ourselves, and then we always fall short for ourselves, and that's what defeats us and holds us back in this, and... I don't know. I don't know about y'all. I can only see Stephanie and Raina's face, this whole thing. So, but I know they were right there with me and I'm so thankful for you. So thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. I feel like I need to message you every day now to get a pep talk. <laughs> and I might. <laughs> you guys are so welcome. I was so happy to do this for you. So I hope you heard my help. I put a lot into that and we all appreciate that because I know what you just did was not something that just pops in your head. You had to actually spend time preparing that for us. And so I, girl, just thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm going to stop.